Hello everyone, and especially Mr. Keshi. In the following video, I'll be presenting my ideas on the generation of dynamic motion within the Keshi plasma dilution reactor. First, let's consider what I mean by dynamic motion. If we consider the particles of a gas or plasma moving or rotating around the central axis in an orbit indicated by these circles and direction indicated by these arrowheads, then this is what I mean by dynamic motion. We could also call this centrifugal or axial rotation and I will use those terms interchangeably for the rest of the video. Briefly before giving details of these methods, I just want to quickly remind everyone what is our final goal. The idea is that we have multiple layers of gases separated either by their own natural tendency to do so or physical means, a physical barrier. When these layers of gas plasma begin to rotate, because they are electrically conducting, they will act like coils to generate magnetic fields. When these magnetic fields interact, Mr. Keshi is suggesting in a very specific way, then we will see the production of gravity. And here I have illustrated in a basic way what this might look like. We have one magnetic field and another enveloping each other, rotating not axially aligned but off-axis to each other and by this off-axis rotation producing gravity. Now to the first means of generating dynamic motion. The first and most obvious method is the mechanical means of generating dynamic motion. You can see here an impeller which will, when spun at high rates, generate the type of motion as I indicated before. I don't think it needs any further explanation other than to say that I have made a conscious effort to avoid placing the impeller in the center. Moving on, the next means of generating uh, dynamic motion, centrifugal motion, is not mechanical and before I continue explaining it, I want to say that this has a number of benefits, primarily that it makes the maintenance and generation of a vacuum much cheaper and much easier. This means is not mechanical but electromagnetic. With this new idea comes also a redesign of the central column, which I will cover first. You can see here that I have the central column and through it three holes are drilled. One of the holes provides an electrical feed through to provide power to the coil, which is just your standard copper coil. The central hole will of course provide the means for entry of the hydrogen and other gases, the loading of the gases. And the third, excuse me, the third entry, the third board hole will be for the helium, the excited helium, all injecting centrally. Going down to the actual coil itself, besides its simple structure, I have, for illustrative purposes, shown the magnetic field that would be generated by the coil once excited. I've also, by these arrows, indicated the direction and position of the electric field that would be generated by the coil. The principle of working is that when we have 
a magnetic field and an electric field in the same area perpendicular to each other which at this point they are then the resulting motion for an electron and a positively charged particle will be as shown by this arrow. What is key to remember and very useful is that this configuration is able to accelerate both of them regardless of their polarity in one direction. And I'm sure you can imagine looking at it from the top that as this as the particles accelerate in this fashion they might reach a point somewhere here which produces a vector which is pointing in this direction and so forth and so on until we get rotational motion of the plasma of the charged particles around in the fashion which is indicated by these circles. Now I've got this idea from uh, reading a paper about the mini magnetosphere plasma propulsion system. This is a method of generating thrust in an aircraft without the use of repellents. In essence, it generates an enormous magnetic field, or we could call that a magnetosphere, which acts as a sail, and when impinged upon by solar winds, generates acceleration. Now this is important because the idea has been tested. There is data methods, etc., which can very quickly uh, lead to uh, the perfection of the design within the Cache reactor. I've sh I'm showing now uh, actual images of the system at work by the uh, uh, creators of the said method. Here you can see a coil, cylind cylindrical however, but still working on the same principle, generating magnetic field within a vacuum chamber. I believe they just have uh, hydrogen in it at the moment. And you can very clearly see the form of the magnetic fields as I have indicated on my illustration. Next, another example. However, I think they've used argon in the chamber this time. More clearly here you can see a resemblance to the design I've presented. This is just, uh, I believe, uh, uh, a means of holding the uh, coil in place, this rod. And very clearly here we can see the magnetosphere and the form of the magnetic lines. On to the next. This method relies once again on electromagnetic means of rotating the plasma. However, this time we have a situation where we have pairs of saddle coils working together. In this arrangement, opposite pairs will be energized at the same time. They will generate a magnetic field here and here. I haven't illustrated it because it is more complicated and difficult to illustrate by lines. And then in the next moment, they will be de-energized and these energized, these, this pair energized. And they will alternate in this manner, constantly at very high frequency. Their magnetic field looks something very similar to what I have simulated here. In this example I'm showing a cross-section of the saddle coil. You can see a cross-section through through this area and you can see very clearly that the coil is producing a accentuated magnetic field outwards and you can also see this very interesting um, gradation of the magnetic field direction which just happens to be very suitable when combined with other coils for the rotation of electrons around the central axis. This method too is not mine. Uh, there is a 
project which aims to best the mini magnetosphere plasma propulsion system called the plasma magnet project and you can see an example of it working right here now this is a slightly different configuration from what I've shown it is in fact a precursor to the design I've shown but it works on the same principle wherein you have two coils only this time and when one coil is energized it produces fields which extend this fashion that is de-energized and another field is produced by this coil in this fashion and so they alternate in this manner this constant alternation oscillation when done very quickly has the effect of seeming to an observer of rotating and so in the papers they often refer to this type of arrangement this and this type of arrangement as a rotating magnetic field but we must keep in mind exactly what this means it's not in fact rotating it's alternating at a high frequency so that two particles which will be rotated once again along these lines it seems to be rotating of course this has again the benefits of being tested there is data on it and so implementation can be uh, accelerated by this fact naturally it has its own specific properties which once again I'm currently simulating to test finally we have a another design this time not taken from a space propulsion system but uh, industrial plasma uh, systems in this method a coil which is resembling a flat helix sits within and completely enclosed a central column at the end of the column a cap specially engineered to permit traversal of the magnetic and electric fields perturbs the plasma sitting at the center in a fashion indicated by these circles in this case the coils are excited at radio frequency this has uh, an additional benefit to the previous two because now I can completely enclose the entire construction and this has the benefit of avoiding corrosion any type of interference of these materials with the plasma which is which can be quite corrosive once again since this is a well-studied industrial process there is lots of data uh, circuits constructions already available to be used as a model for uh, its use in the Cauchy reactor in concluding I want to mention an important fact this particular design along with that of the saddle rotating magnetic field design under specific regimes of the signal supplied to them specifically in higher in the higher radio frequency range is able to ionize or sustain the ionization and heat the plasma and this method the inductively coupling of plasma is specifically used in this way not to rotate the plasma as much as it is to generate ionization and sustain the ionization and heat the plasma so these methods as far as I understand so far hold the possibility of avoiding helium altogether or using helium but ionizing it via electromagnetic means which is the most common in industrial situations instead of radioactive means 
This has specific implications on the energies released and I have not pursued it in detail yet. But I'm confident that with study this can be uh, a method of ionizing gas as an alternative to radioactive means. I'd like to suggest that if anyone has questions, criticisms, anything to add to what I've uh, included in this video, to contact me via a private message or the forum. I have deliberately simplified the explanations of the various methods I've shown, with the exception of the first which couldn't be more complicated than it is. So if you have questions concerning specific voltages, frequencies, the circuits that might power these, I'll be glad to um, consider the options with you and hopefully we can work together on alternative means or developing the means I've shown. Till next time, this is KPV.